So yes, another mini PC. This one is an interesting one for the price it has been selling for and did sell for very cheap under 400 US dollars. It is the Chewy Core Box Pro. Now this one I ordered from Banggood. I didn't get it from Chewy themselves, not this time around. It has 12 gigabytes of RAM and is powered by the Core i3. Now probably a lot of you when you hear that Core i3, oh, okay. Don't click away just yet. Even though yes, it's dual core and only four threads, it does have the G1 graphics, this particular chip, the Core i3, it's the 1005 G1. Now the G1 graphics is faster than your typical UHD 620, it has 32 executional cores offering better performance. Now this model also does have Thunderbolt 3, something we don't normally see for at least this category and pricing of a mini PC. 12 gigabytes of RAM and dual channel, a 256 gigabyte NVMe drive, Intel Wi-Fi 6, which is the AX200, all in this decent package with very good thermals and fan noise, as you'll find out in this in-depth review. In the box, you'll find our power supply. This is rather small, good, nice size, which I do like to see. It's rated to 65 watts maximum. We have our EU power cable because this is the EU model that I got sent. And here we have our SATA 3 data and power connector and then some screws if you were going to be installing a 2.5 inch drive. So the left and right of this mini PC, there are no ports or anything. It's just these side vents for the airflow. On the rear of the mini PC, we have a very large exit vent there. So that's where all the hot air is going to be blown out. So of course, don't block this. It's pretty obvious. Then we've got a power in right here. Thunderbolt 3, two USB 3s. HDMI 2 and then DisplayPort 1.4a. So great to see both of those ports on there. Both support 4K60. And then we do have audio in and out 3.5 millimeter and two gigabit LANs right there if you needed that. So you could set this up as say a router or a server. And up front, we just have a power on button with a status LED that is blue behind it. So there's no USB ports on the front, which would have been great. I would have preferred to have seen right here, maybe two USB 2s. I think would have been ideal. Most people agree with me on this to add, say, a mouse or a keyboard would have been perfect. So you notice that there's probably a couple of rough edges on the plastics on this. The uh, markings on it, little scratches. There's a little bit of a ding right here. There's a tiny bit of a mark right there as well. So it's not perfect when it comes out of the box, and it was a sealed box, so that's just a minor. Now this screw is loose because I've loosened this off myself to show you the internals. We've got two very large rubber feet on the bottom and another intake vent on the bottom. Now this isn't the first time I've seen this particular case from Chewy. They've used it before in the core box, and this is now the core box Pro. I do happen to like it because it looks like a mini tower PC. So this part here is made out of an alloy on the top. We have plastic around the outside. The build quality is, is okay. There's a few little rough edges on the plastics, but in general it's quite good, and I do like the layout. So on the bottom where you would have the rubber feet, I have removed that. Now just to quickly show you, our internals as well. So I'll show you where the bottom plate is right here. And that would normally be like this. So we have room for one 2.5 inch drive. So you've got the cable included as I showed you with the unboxing portion, the four screws then to screw it into place. And that is great. And you plug it into the motherboard just down there. But I wanted to show you this cooler briefly because we've got a reasonably sized fan. It's not too large, but the cooling is quite good because we have a transfer pipe, two transfer pipes in the inside and then the fins at the back, which the hot air is blown out of. And as I'll show you later on, the cooling is quite good and the fan noise is actually very good on this particular mini PC as well. You can see right inside there, those two copper transfer pipes, a very large plate that's going over the chipset. Now the RAM is completely non-upgradable. It's soldered on those 12 gigabytes to the motherboard. All right, so you cannot change it or swap it over. The wireless card as well, that cannot be changed. The only thing that can be swapped over and upgraded is this right here, which is our Kingston 256 gigabyte NVMe drive. You can change that if you wanted to put something like a Sabrent drive in there or a Samsung 970 Evo Plus, then you can do that. And there are the connectors. There's in fact two SATA 3 connectors in there, but we've only got room for the single drive because, well, the fan and everything else there is in the way. Now our bias is somewhat disappointing because Chewy, like they have on their other mini PCs, have completely locked us out of the advanced settings. So we cannot change a single thing. You cannot even set it to change when it detects the power state is gone. So you can't set this up on a switch. So if it lost power, it could automatically power on. You cannot change that, unfortunately. Now you can see here that our memory frequency is very high with this. So 3.7 gigahertz and we have 12 gigabytes of RAM. 
On first boot, we will be greeted with the following screen that does have all of these pre-installed language packs already there, part of the Windows 10 image. The Corebox Pro is running Windows 10 Home. As you can see, it's version 2004, so you will need to run updates, of course. Now, I have the scaling set of the desktop here to 150%. That is just so you can see everything a little bit clearer. Normally I would be running it at 100%. So I'll just drive that Kingston that I showed you in the internals. It can be swapped out and replaced with something larger if you wanted to. You have 206 gigabytes free on the first boot. And these are okay speeds for an NVMe drive. They are no definite, no Samsung 970 Evo kind of speeds. No, Evo Plus. But it's okay, this is still, I mean, faster, a lot faster than SATA 3. And of course you can install a SATA 3 SSD if you wanted to do so to expand upon your storage capacity right there. So there are a few interesting things to point out when we take a look here at our devices. That There's the drive, but we also have this. We've got Bluetooth 5 on board and the wireless AX201 from Intel. So this is really good to have this particular Wi-Fi chip in there. Now you can't replace it, you can't upgrade it, but it is extremely fast. This can have a, in theory, output of about 2.6 gigabits per second. I can get about 1.4 to 1.5 with my current router here. I do need to upgrade it if I want better speeds. And I found the range and reception very, very good. The antennas are located on the front of this mini PC. So here is the processor that is the Core i3, the 1005G1. Now the G1 graphics is quite good uh, for integrated graphics, so much better than the previous generations. And you'll see here with HW info that I do have open in the background. So this is the Ice Lake U. And this chip does have a power limit one of 15 watts and power limit two of quite high of 50 watts here. And we might be able to tweak this as well using Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. So the graphics, this is where it is something special, something a little bit different here. And we also have that Thunderbolt 3 support too with this particular mini PC. So with this Ice Lake graphics, it has the 32 executional cores, and it also does have the one gigabyte of RAM allocated to it as well, which is going to help improve the performance. So the maximum turbo of this particular chipset is low. It's only 3.4 gigahertz, which is, yeah, it's kind of low. So two cores, four threads. And I'll be showing you in this in-depth review exactly what kind of performance you can expect to get out of it. And this interesting integrated graphics it does offer with those 32 executional cores, a lot faster than the typical we normally get. And our memory, so we have an odd combination here of 12 gigabytes. I would have ideally liked to have seen 16. And as I pointed out, when we looked at the internals briefly, that you cannot upgrade the RAM, unfortunately. 12, I think is sufficient enough. I think that's still actually quite good considering the whole entire price of this particular package. Now on first boot, you're going to have about nine gigabytes or so available to you, depending on course on what you're doing. And it is running in dual channel, which is great. Let's move on now to the performance and what you can expect out of this mini PC. So it is quick, it's fast. The single core speeds, even though it's only 3.4, the maximum turbo, does offer a very responsive Windows 10 and the 12 gigabytes of RAM. So the start menu, that will pop up very quick. There is no noticeable lag and issues with that. So light computing is really what this is ideal for and a very heavy document here with a lot of pages. So this has uh, just, well, almost 860. It's quick, editing text, moving things around you're not going to run into any noticeable slowdown and lag with that kind of thing. The 12 gigabytes of RAM is helping more than the 8 gigabytes I had on the last mini PC. And it will also edit spreadsheets and other things just fine too with no problems, no lag there. That's a relatively large one, 700 lines there, records, and not a problem, okay? Video playback. So demanding files like this one here, 140 megabits per second, 4K, 10-bit. HEVC, you'll notice initially there are a few little stutters and then it's fine. It plays just fine, no problems there. So 4K60 is what you can get out of this. 4K60 hertz out of the ports, which is great. The last mini PC I reviewed, it was limited to only 4K30, which was HDMI 1.4 A spec, and this is HDMI 2, which is great. So another video file here, 60 frames per second, 4K. Again, no problem. So that is all pretty straightforward, working well there. Now, the things to point out is that the thermals on this unit, very, very good. And the fan noise is excellent. So similar to the Corebox, the Corebox Pro here has really good cooling. So maximum temperatures are around 75 degrees. My ambient temperature here currently in the room is approximately 24 to 25 degrees. So it is just fine. 
And the best thing about this mini PC here is the fan noise. Really, really good. It is a just a tiny whooshing noise. I can barely pick it up on the mic, so there's no sample here. But trust me, it is very good, very quiet, and I'm really happy with the fan noise on this. Now, the power use. So at the wall with my meter, at IDO, you're looking at more than the last mini PC I reviewed with the Core i3. This one's around 9 to 11 watts at idle. Just Chrome with about five tabs open, uh, 16 watts, sometimes a little bit lower. And then gaming around 36 watts. Even though the power limit can go up to 50, it never seems to get anywhere close to that, at least with my testing now, gaming and playing things like Counter-Strike and pushing it with all these benchmarks the whole time when I got those thermals, you just saw then that it wouldn't go over that. So power use is, is actually quite good. And the thermals are just the best thing about it. And the fan noise, very, very good. And you can see the power limit there, 50 watts, but getting nowhere near that in total. I was pleasantly surprised to see that this does support 4K at 120 hertz. So I have an LG CX and it is able to run this particular desktop resolution at that 120 frames per second, 120 hertz, so it's super fluid and smooth. And normally you wouldn't get that for a mini PC that's around 350 US dollars. It also does support HDR2 within Windows 10. 4K video editing, so can it be done on this spec? I would not normally do this because, well, it's only a dual core, and even though it's got 12 gigabytes of RAM, it is still going to struggle with this. So the timeline is a little slow, and I have it just set back to a playback resolution of only a quarter, and at times you can see that it will be a bit choppy there. So that's not running at 30 frames per second there. It is possible as long as you don't color grade, you don't have any fancy transitions and things like that. Now I will check out the export time of one minute of footage. We'll see how long is it going to take at the YouTube preset that I always test out, which I have set there now for just a fraction over one minute of footage. So we'll hit start on the timer and export there, which was a delay of about one second. And we'll see how long this is going to take. It's looking like it will be just over one minute, which is not bad considering the spec of this mini PC. Once that bar's gone completely, there we go. So you could say that was about one minute and 25 seconds. Again, that's not too bad considering the spec, but remember this is a basic edit and export with Adobe Premiere Pro here. Counter-Strike performance now. So this is 720p, lowest possible settings. And already we're getting a good frame rate compared to what I had on the B-Link SI with the Core i3 with UHD 620 graphics. The UHD G1 here performing so much better. We're getting up to, well, 100 frames per second. That's good to see. And even though it's just HD here and low settings, it's a huge difference compared to that last mini PC and the typical UHD graphics. Oh, I missed them. I completely missed them then. Okay, so that's, there he is. Got him. Didn't even see me. And then I died. Okay, so I didn't last long, but at least I managed to get one kill. Let's have a look now at GTA 5 performance. Normal settings with this one, and it is 720p again, because I think that's probably the best resolution to run. Now, of course, you could go with 1080p, but you will probably take a hit of about 10 frames per second. So it's just 40 frames per second now at the moment. 35, 33. Just playable, although down to 25, 26. Now I could lower down the population density. I have that actually set on the medium setting. So population density and the view distance and those things on medium. It's just to make it look a little bit better. So if you are really after a better frame rate, of course, lower those things down. And then this game would be just scraping over 30 frames per second and well, semi-playable. Uh, you know, you would want to get a bit higher than this. So even though it has the G1, with its 32 executional cores, this particular integrated Intel GPU, uh, it still is no match for those AMD ones, is it? The Ryzen and the Vega. The Vega graphics, like the Vega 10 or the Vega 7, would be a good 20 frames per second or so more than this, and could even run it in 1080p. But at least it is a lot better than the integrated UHD 620 that we normally have with these mini PCs. Last but not least is Linux here. This is Linux Mint, a latest build from them, and everything is working. So the Wi-Fi 6 connected to my Wi-Fi 6 network, not a problem, working just fine. 
It does report sometimes, well, most of the time, actually, about one bar less. But right here, it is currently at 70% signal strength. So I'm not too sure why that is. It's probably differences with the driver there compared to Windows. But it's good to see everything out of the box works just fine with Linux. As long as you get a new distro, you shouldn't run into any driver problems with the wireless. And the performance does seem quite decent, quite good with the 12 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, so now recapping, if you are after a mini PC that has excellent fan noise, very good thermals, plenty of options with things like Thunderbolt 3, and it can run a 4K monitor, two 4K monitors at 6, 4K 60, then this is a mini PC for you. So very good in those areas. And the drive speed is still decent, NVMe, it's Windows 10 Home fully activated, proper license is within the BIOS there, so that's not an issue with this model. It really just comes down to one thing with this mini PC, and you probably guessed it, is the performance. It's low end, okay? This is a Core i3, it's not exactly a powerhouse. It is limited, definitely, by that maximum turbo, which is sadly only 3.4 gigahertz. The thermals in this could certainly handle well over four, not a problem. And of course, it only has the two cores, the four threads. So that's a limiting factor there. However, I mean, Windows 10 does run good for those lighter computing tasks, like your documents, your spreadsheets, media consumption, all good there. And even very basic 4K video editing that I tested out. So no color grading, no fancy transitions, just a plain kind of edit. It can do it if you've got a bit of patience there to put up with the occasional lag and starter. Gaming performance, even though it does have the G1 Intel G1 integrated graphics. It is a step up from the UHD 620. Good to see, it's still not wonderful and still not really a gaming at all. It's not a gaming mini PC there. So there you go. That is the full story there of the Chewy Core Box Pro. Thank you so much for watching this review. And if you're interested in the pricing of this model, I didn't mention it in video intentionally because they fluctuate so much. You can find it down in the description of this video. And I do hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.